and director. And our third uh, member of the Canada development team, uh, Chris Barnes, will be joining us shortly. He um, was finishing up uh, a class with his students, and so he should be jumping in here um, in a little while. So let's get us started. So just wanting to give you a little overview of uh, TPE, and so TPE is the number one student affairs career resource in the world, and so um, we work really hard to put on this, um, not just the on-site event um, in March, but also working to um, providing job uh, uh, job search services and support and resources all year round, and so um, we try to make sure that we can support candidates, um, entry-level candidates, mid-level, um, higher-up candidates at any stage of their job search process. And um, so far, we, I think we've been doing really great. 92% of the candidates that have interacted and or used uh, TPE at some point would say that they would recommend TPE. To give you an idea of the size of TPE, last year during um, there are on site right before NASPA, we um, were able to coordinate and uh, schedule and make sure that 13,084 interviews um, occurred during the on site event um, in 2016. And so we're hoping to, um, our hope every year is that we can beat the number from the prior year and to get more interviews scheduled um, for candidates. And so it's a really great opportunity um, for those candidates who are wanting to get out there, um, are looking for positions. We have a wide range of positions. And so um, uh, that's what we're working to do. We work all year round to, to try to um, make sure that we can help you find a job, and not just any job, but a job that you love, a job that you're excited about. Um, so that's what we do. TPE offers not just the career development and exploration, um, but we really want to just let me say, be your support. And I think you know, student affairs is so much about your networks and your your community and your support systems. And so we want you to think of TPE as as, as one piece of your support system um, as you're on the job market, um, thinking about going on the job market, anything like that. Um, so as part of TPE, you have access to 24/7. You have 24/7 access to job postings year round. We constantly get job postings from institutions. Um, when you know they have openings and we know that openings come up all year round and so um, just like when you look at um, higher ed jobs or, or um, any other job um, on a site online think of TPE make sure that you regularly check it because we're constantly posting jobs as we get them from institutions um, another piece of uh, um, support that we offer through TPE is our educational sessions and webinars this being one of them and so um, we have a calendar of sessions that go year-round um, obviously between now and our on-site event we try to um, you know, make sure that we provide a little bit more because everybody's, you know, kind of getting ready and revved up for um, the job search process. Um, but we do work to provide these educational sessions and webinars all year round, as well as while we're on site, we also will have some um, round tables that we provide for you all um, to continue prepping and learning and preparing um, even while you're on site. And you can check the schedule. Um, if you go to the TPE uh, website, you can check the schedule for webinars that we have for the entire year. Um, another uh, great tool that we provide is career coaching and mentoring. Um, again, we do this both on site and off site. So we're working to provide some um, virtual coaching later on. Um, after the, the this orientation, we will uh, work to provide one uh, Q&A session um, a month, and that would pretty much just, just going to be an hour that we dedicate, or hour and a half, or however many questions, however long we need to stay to answer all questions uh, for candidates to come in and just ask any sort of questions about on-site, TBE on-site, how to prepare, um, doubts or fears or concerns that you may have as you're going through this job process. It's really just an open um, space for you all to come and, and, and engage with um, the candidate development team and ask any questions that, that you may have. Um, 
and, and again, we'll be doing that um, uh, coaching and, and mentoring and doing some mock interviews and things like that on site as well and so make sure for those that are planning to attend TPE on site um, to, to just make note of that and know that that is available of course some you know some use it a lot and some may not and sometimes um, candidates just sometimes may need just to come in and touch base with somebody for five minutes and, and talk something through or may want to run through and do a full mock interview or whatever it may be we will have those um, resources available for you. And then just again, just to touch on just the vast number of interviews that we do conduct on site annually um, and are hoping to continue that um, this upcoming year in San Antonio as well. So getting started. So the job search process, I think, starts a whole lot time before you actually start putting in your applications. And so really right now what we suggest people to either be doing or should already have been doing um, is to to do some self-reflection and to really think about what it is that you want from your position. And so I think one of the big things um, that people tend to forget to do, especially when you're looking for your first position right out of graduate school and you're worried about I just I just want to get a job like I'll go anywhere I just want a job and I think that we get so scared to not finding anything that we don't really think about you know what it is that we are looking for in a position we know what employ I think we always think about what employers are looking for in employees and maybe a lot of times we don't think about what it is that we want um, in, in our next position. Um, and so a big thing that you need to do is identify your non-negotiables um, and make sure that you know what those are because I think that that would definitely guide the way that which in which you approach looking at job posts um, and, and deciding whether that is something that you want to pursue and, and turn in an application for or not. Um, so it can be things like if you know that you have a pet and you're, you know, wanting to go into housing. Do they have a pet policy? Um, do you have to live on campus? And if so, like, what are the the regulations um, that go with living on campus? Or if you have to live off campus, what does that mean then with you having to look for a place and, and where can you live and things like that? So think about those those pieces uh, for those that may have. Um, of partners, um, you know, and, and that's something that you need to think about in terms of benefits that are available, um, that are provided through your your um, your institution. Things um, like health benefits for um, our LGBTQ um, folks, um, even geographic, you know, certain states. Um, if there's same-sex marriage laws or maybe immigration laws or, you know, just bigger societal um, issues and sort of happenings that you need to be aware of as you're looking into positions and looking at, you know, what is non-negotiable for you and what needs to be present or not present um, at whatever institution that you're in. Um, thinking about the size of community that you want, if you are needing to be in a big city and you need, you know, you you wanting to have a lot of um, people around, you know, maybe going into a small college town is not the best place or vice versa. I know a lot of people who just do not want to live in a city, so maybe applying to a position in Chicago or New York is not going to be a good idea for them. So thinking about, you know, what is it that you what is it that you want included in your community? What do you need in that space for you? Again, diversity of community I think is really big, especially for um, some of our, uh, you know, colleagues of color looking at, you know, what is around in the community? Do you see representation of other people of color? Is that really important to you? Um, you know, even for me, like certain things like being able to find um, grocery stores that had, you know, some uh, items so that I can make Mexican food or things like that. You know, I think that some of those things are important and we don't necessarily think about that as we're looking at uh, job positions and are, and are just concerned about getting employed. We don't think about the 
you know, once you get a job, you also then have to move there and live there for X amount of time. Um, and so thinking about that as you're looking at positions is really important. And, um, and again, things like location nearest to an airport. I think for me, when I got my first position, I ended up at a small college town, and it took me at least an hour, usually two, to get to an airport. And now that I'm getting a little older and I have family um, far away, I think that I think about that. Like, if for my next move, like I want to be no more than you know 45 minutes from an airport, because if something happens in an emergency and I need to get on a plane real quick, like that's that uh, matters to me. Being able to get to an airport very quickly matters to me. So things like that. Make sure that you go through, think about like what you have going on in your life, what are your priorities in your life right now, um, and how does that then translate to what is going to be a non-negotiable as you're looking for positions. Um, again, to narrow your search, there are tons and tons and tons and tons of positions open every year. And so think about things like geographic regions that you would like to live in or maybe not live in, types of institutions. You know, are you looking for a big state institution? Are you looking for a mid-size uh, state institution? Are you looking for a liberal arts institution or a minority serving institution or a religious institution? Um, what types of institutions are, are you looking for or do you think that you would like to explore? Um, once you start looking at that and as you see positions that are interesting to you, look at the mission and values of the division. What do they stand for? Um, what is the type of work that they do? Well, how does the organizational um, map for that unit or that department um, look like? What does the um, uh, reporting line look like? Um, that sort of thing. And then again, things like size of, a, uh, of the department. If you are good working um, by yourself or in a small group, then you know maybe you're fine in a small five people department. If you're one that likes to collaborate with a lot of people and the department um, in which a position that you're looking at has maybe two or three people, it may not be the best place for you. And so thinking about things like that of like how do you work, how do you work best, what type of environment do you want, what type of colleagues do you want, what type of a department do you want in your position are good for you to sort of establish before you dig into all of the job posts because then it will make it a lot easier for you to, to differentiate, yes, this is a good position, this fits what I want, I'm going to apply to this, or no, it seems like a really interesting position but it's missing, you know, two of my non-negotiables or it doesn't really fit what I'm looking for, I can let that one go and not have to worry about it. So again, one of the big reasons that we have you all is the TPE website. Um, and first thing is first, if you're um, wanting to, to um, join TPE um, and, and use the resources, you need to create a candidate profile. And one of the big things, especially if you're going on site, doing on site, make sure that you make your um, profile public. Um, and this is really important because if you don't make it public, then um, it'll the employers won't be able to see your profile and your CV. Um, and so make sure that if you know you're wanting to put your information out there and make sure that employers can see it, make it public. Um, again, register for TPE on site. The sooner you register, the better. Um, I just got wind that the week of um, NASPA is going to be uh, right around Fiesta time, I think, in San Antonio. So it may be a very busy time in San Antonio when, right, right when we're doing uh, TPE and NASPA. And so um, make sure that you register um, as as soon as you can, make your hotel reservations as soon as you can. Um, it's not something that you're going to want to stress out about after the fact. Um, and especially for registering, the sooner you register, the sooner you get to see all of the job placements that are available through uh, the placement exchange. Um, start searching for jobs and, and get yourself organized. Search for jobs and, and, and um, figure out a way to keep track of, track of them because there's going to be a lot that you're going to be interested in. So whether it is you create an Excel file and that's how you keep track of your the positions that you're doing or you you know write everything in a notebook or you put together a binder or something. Figure out what the best strategy um, and process is for you to organize all of the, the jobs that you're interested in. 
read the TPE blog. Um, we have uh, blogs coming out, I believe, every two weeks, and they range. They have a wide range of topics from. Um, I think we have one coming up that talks about what your resume should say about you. Um, we have things like transitioning to a new position and how to budget for that, how to budget for a big move, um, how to put together your resume, um, how to network, um, just a bunch of different um, blogs that we have available for you all with further information. So we're trying to get to information on very uh, on a bunch of different um, platforms and, and avenues so that we can make sure that you are fully prepared. Um, other online resources, the virtual roundtable, so again, all of our webinars, the virtual coaching, um, the question hours, and then also the newsletters for those who have registered for TPE every first Friday of the month. Um, we will be putting out some newsletters with a bunch of uh, tips and timelines and suggestions of what you could be doing now. Um, and then we've also um, are working on uh, including some testimonials of past uh, TPE candidates so that you can kind of see what what it is that they um, experienced going through TPE, how it may have helped them um, in their job um, search and, and, and what they're doing now. So the job posts, um, just very, very quickly. Um, there are two types of job posts on the TPE job board. Um, there's an online job post, and that is um, a position that's open for all candidates to apply to. Um, so um, that's pretty self-explanatory. So those are the ones that are open to everybody, whether you're registered or not. And then there's also event job posts. And these are specifically for um, TPE on-site. So there's a standard event job post um, that is open for any registered TPE on-site candidates to apply. Um, and then there's a premium event job post. And this is open for both registered and non-registered TPE on-site candidates. So if you haven't yet registered, for TPE, you are only able to see um, the premium event job posts. Now, once you register, then you'll be able to see both the premium and the standard. So um, um, just think about that. The longer you, you, the sooner that you register, the sooner that you'll be able to see all of the job posts that we get. And we have new job posts being posted every day, um, every week. I mean, so that's constantly increasing. So make sure that if you already have registered and you've already gone through and looked at all of the job posts that were there when you registered, make it a point. Pick a day where you're going back to the TPE website and rechecking and see what else is being posted that's new. Um, up until when you're on site, we get several positions that are still continuing to be posted once we're on site. So just get into the rhythm of checking every couple of days or every week or every however often you need to check to sort of make sure that you're keeping up with what, um, what's being posted. Again, utilizing your resources. This year, we're really pushing on doing the TPE 365, so all year round. Um, and so a big uh, piece of that, and really the central focus of that, is through the website. Everything that we um, provide for you, there should be links and directions and information about at our website. And so flag it on your um, on your browser. Um, you know, check it as part of, you know, if you you know, when you check email on Monday mornings, check the TP website, see if there's a new blog post up, or if there's the link to the last webinar that we just did, or, you know, maybe there's a couple new posts on there. Just make sure that you check it regularly. Um, and then TPE on-site, we also, like I said, provide a lot of resources while we're on-site. Um, one of the most popular one being our boot camp, um, and that has always is a limited number of seats. In the past, we, lim we capped off the boot camp at 100 uh, candidates, and this year what we're trying to do, because the number of candidates has been steadily growing year after year, we're hoping to um, double the number of seats available for boot camp, so we're hoping to um, have boot camp open for 200 uh, candidates this upcoming um, year in San Antonio. 
And so um, look out for that. We will send emails um, once we figure out the date of when registration is going to be open. Um, and make sure that you mark your calendars. It has been an every year situation that boot camp is uh, full within the first couple of hours of when registration is open. So if you're if this is something that you may be interested in, make sure that you um, mark your calendars. We will also once we figure uh, once we set the the registration open date, um, there will also be a blog that comes out that has information about what we will provide at boot camp. Um, one of the pieces that we always do is a, a Q and A session with some of the TPE um, planning committee. Uh, members and um, again it's another opportunity where we are there and it's a free-for-all whatever questions you want to ask are available for you um, we also do um, mock interviews during the boot camp and that's one of the more popular activities within boot camp that people really appreciate um, we also are doing a resume review and that will open um, early next month um, and that'll give you an opportunity to submit a resume and we're uh, currently um, getting volunteers of um, current uh, student affairs professionals in the field with um, you know a certain number of years of experience that have agreed to look at resumes, give feedback, and then we'll you know we'll provide you that feedback as you're um, finalizing all of the details of your resumes and you know making your profiles and starting to put in official applications for jobs. Um, and then again, on-site candidate coaching, we're hoping also this year, because this has been such a popular uh, resource on-site, uh, is to create a separate space um, that will be just for uh, candidate coaching as part of the candidate workroom. And you'll kind of, um, in a little bit, you'll be able to see a little bit more what the space looks like. We have some pictures from previous TPE on-sites where you'll be able to see, but um, we're hoping to set um, uh, a segment off a piece of the candidate workspace that we can provide more coaching for you all, and that will be available during open hours um, on site um, to sit down and have a coaching session with a current student affairs professional. And so right now what we're going to go into is really just the nitty gritty. And I think that this is a lot of what people have anxiety about is like really what to expect while you're on site um, because it's such a big space. And we want to make sure that you're, you feel as prepared as possible so that you're not overwhelmed walking into this space. Um, we're going to try to kind of go through with as much detail as, as possible um, to kind of give you an overview of the different areas and kind of the flow of what TPE on-site looks like. So when you walk into the interview hall at TPE, um, it, it can be a little overwhelming the first time that you walk in. And so we want to just be upfront and clear about that. And then also talk to you a little bit about what you can see and what you can expect. Um, and so um, if you look at the picture that's all the way to the right of your screen, uh, you'll see that there are some blue curtains that are set up, uh, and those are what we call the candidate waiting areas. And so when you walk in the hall um, for TPE, when you're on site to do the interviews, um, that's a, a good place for you to be able to find your center in the interview hall. And so the waiting areas are typically, there's four of them. There's waiting area A, B, C, and D, and they're separated out by your candidate last name. And so whatever your last name is, is where you will always go um, to be picked up by an employer. And so whenever you have an interview scheduled, and you'll know those things ahead of time through the TPE um, website, You'll just go there a couple of minutes before your interview starts. I'd normally recommend for people to get there five to ten minutes before. And then you'll sit there and wait for those interviewers to be able to come and get you. Um, every now and then they might be running a few minutes late because there's back-to-back -back interviews and things like that that are going on, um, which is totally fine. But there's always going to be a volunteer around to be able to help you if you feel like someone may have forgotten you or things are running a little bit late. And we can... And we'll go over that a little bit more once you get to on-site, but that was just something that I wanted to make sure that we pointed out. Um, what you'll also see in this picture is a bunch of areas with all the black curtains, and you can see that there's a bunch of different interview tables that are all around. And so what you can expect is that all of the schools that are there recruiting for specific positions 
will have their interview tables set up and they'll be decorated like some of the tables that you see over on the left side of your screen um, to show their school pride and also so that you can easily identify uh, where the table is and what tables um, in the schools that are around. Um, the reason why we tell all the candidates to wait in the candidate waiting area is because sometimes different schools with different positions and different departments will have different tables that they need to go to. And so you should just wait for the employer to be able to come and get you. And they'll have some different ways that they'll be able to identify you as a candidate. Um, a lot of times people will have whiteboards with your name written on it so that they're crystal clear about who they're looking for. Um, schools will have their mascot or something in their hand to be able to indicate who they're looking for. And a lot of times they'll also call out your name um, in the waiting area to be able to come to get you and walk you over to the table. So you never have to worry about going to go find a school and where they're located. You just need to worry about getting to your waiting area. Um, the picture that's on the top left, it's also important to recognize and realize that you will be interviewing with a bunch of different schools with other people who are pretty close by. Um, the nice part about the acoustics in the room is that you can't, it, it's kind of like muffled white noise, which is really good because you'll be able to hear the people that you need to hear and that you're talking to. Um, but just be aware that there are other people interviewing around. And so being kind and courteous of your volume, but also when you're leaving the interview tables to go back to the candidate waiting area, um, just being cognizant that there are interviews in progress all around. The next part of the interview hall, um, that, which is typically located on the outside, is the interview scheduling area. And so when you are on site at TPE, you don't really necessarily need to worry too much about, um, or you'll need to be able to look at your schedule to be able to see what's going on. But as schools contact you to be able to schedule interviews with them, uh, you'll go over to the interview scheduling area um, which will be located in a central location um, and we'll show you that on the, on the orientation on site where you can go and, and sign up for interviews with schools. Um, once you're on site, you do need an invitation from a school to be able to say, please sign up for an interview with us. And then at the interview scheduling station, they'll be able to take a look at your schedule and they'll also be able to take a look at the school schedule to be able to get you synced up. Um, to be um, with an interview time that's available for both of you. A lot of times interviews are scheduled either for a half hour or one hour, and the schools will tell you specifically about how much time that you'll need to be able to schedule interviews as well. Um, a tip that I normally tell people about interview scheduling is don't overdo it when you're, interview when you're scheduling interviews with schools. Um, you should be scheduling school with schools that you are serious about interviewing with, but then you should also make sure that you have some time in between one interview and the next so that you have a little bit of time to decompress, go back, write a thank you note, think about what you need to be able to do and switch gears to get ready for the next school. Um, sometimes I tell people it depends on who you are and how you want to schedule that. And sometimes you might not be able to get it quite the way that you want it, but just make sure that you're doing anything that you can to prepare ahead of time to be able to manage your schedule the best way. One of the key ways that you will be communicating with employers while you're on site is in the candidate mailbox area. Um, and so each candidate will be assigned a mailbox based on your candidate number. And so the candidate number that you receive is something that will happen automatically when you register for the TPE on-site event. Um, and, it, and online, it'll tell you right at the top of the page what your candidate number is. Uh, that same candidate number is the number that you will use with all of your correspondence with employers. And so whenever you communicate with an employer, make sure that you put your own candidate number on your information or on the form that you would communicate with them on. Um, and then they'll have an employer number that you'll also be able to see that you want to make sure that you put the employer number on there as well. What's really nice about the mailbox area is that whenever a school is inviting you to do an interview, Whenever a school is, um, wants to give you some information about their school or a small gift from their school to say thank you for interviewing with us, um, all of that information and everything else will be routed to your mailbox. Um, you don't have to worry about, in the mailbox area, is something that's open to all of the candidates to be able to go and get your mail, sit down with it, 
read through whatever it is that you need to read through so that you can figure out how to manage your life while you're at TPE. And so there are a lot of mailboxes that are going to be there, and so we will have them clearly labeled on the top of each mailbox on what numbers are in specific areas. And you'll be able to walk right up to your mailbox at any given time, and you'll be able to check, check that whenever you need it. The other thing, so I have a tip, I think, for each area here, so hopefully these are helpful. Um, one of the things that I tell candidates about mailboxes is check it intermittently. Don't feel like you have to check it every 5 or 10 or 15 minutes. Um, space it out a little bit because sometimes as employers are trying to get in, con or get in contact with people and still managing interviews, it takes us a little bit of time sometimes to be able to get to all the candidates that are responding to us. And so don't fret if you're waiting to hear back from a school and they haven't sent you a message or anything like that ahead of time um, or in, in your mailbox just yet. They might be getting to it a little bit later in the day. The other thing that I want to make sure that we communicate too is that a lot of the information that you'll have will, um, or, or the communication and correspondence that you'll have with employers is online through the TPE website. And so um, prior to the event, most of that communication and your scheduling you'll be able to manage all of that on the TPE website ahead of time. Um, but sometimes the more quick way to communicate with someone, if you're unable, if you send them a message and they're unable to check it, is through the mailbox system. And so um, we'll show you again where all those things are once we get on site. Um, the candidate areas, um, as Berenice was talking a little bit about before, um, we have great workspace and great work areas for you as candidates to be able to have some space that's away from the whole event and also space that's away from uh, all the employers who are working on different things. And so we have candidate-only areas where you'll be able to go in, you'll be able to sit at round tables, you'll be able to have some workspace. There are computers that will be in the candidate um, workroom, there are printers that are in the candidate workroom, and you'll be able to to sit down, write notes, print out your resume, do whatever it is that you feel like you need to do, write employer's notes, and there's also a drop-off point in the candidate workroom to drop off mail to be able to be run over to the employer side so that you don't have to always be the person that's taking a mail to the employer to drop it off. Um, you can simply uh, drop it off in the candidate workroom area um, and we'll make sure that it gets over to them. Out outside of that candidate area, the main one, there's also a candidate quiet room, and so some of you might need a little bit of time to decompress, might need a more quiet space uh, where everybody's not running around and everybody's doing things, and so we have that space that's set aside, and we'll ask the candidates that are in that space to make sure that they're remaining quiet. Um, sometimes you just need a step away from all of the different things that are going on, and so um, we want to make sure that we uh, that you have that uh, candidate area to be able to work in and also the candidate area to be able to have some quiet time in. All right, so when we talk about preparing for the interview, um, so a few tips that we want to make sure that we share with you um, is to research the institution and the department that you're interviewing with ahead of time. It's really important for you to be able to know some of the key factors of what that institution and what that department stands for and some of the accomplishments that that department also stands for before you start and sit down with a, with an interviewer. It's really impressive as, uh, as an employer when a candidate has done a little bit of research about the department and they have some pointed questions that about specific things that the department is working on. Um, the general questions I think are also really good, especially for the the um, interviews that are earlier on, but sometimes it makes you stand out just a little bit more if you can show that you've done your research by asking some really good questions on things that you've seen online or things that you want a little bit more clarification on. Um, we are going to encourage you also to complete your online TPE candidate profile. Um, a lot of times employers will go on and look at the different candidate profiles to be able to do some matching to be able to say, hey, you you might not have seen our position, but it's something that you might be interested in and qualified for. Um, I know a lot of candidates in the past who have been contacted by schools to be able to say, 
hey, this is something that you might be interested in and have found a perfect match on different jobs that they might have not seen before because there's so many to be able to look through. Um, and so being, making sure that your online CPE candidate profile is as up to date as it can be with an updated resume and all of your other information, I think is a really great tip for employers to be able to see um, with you as well. Um, the interview apparel while with TPE on-site um, is generally business professional. And so when you think about going to interview with a different school, um, a lot of times they'll be dressed in business professional clothes as well. And so you won't necessarily feel out of place when everybody is dressed in their business professional wear. Um, it's about putting your best foot forward and showing you know your professional polish and that you are in tune and ready to interview with people. And so think about what that means for you. Um, and I always recommend for people, if you don't necessarily know um, what may or may not be acceptable as far as interview apparel is concerned, um, this is a great time for you to be able to connect with a mentor or connect with one of us um, in the, on the candidate development team to be able to help to provide some guidance on, on what it is that you might want to, to get before your interviews. Um, mock interviewing is also something that's really important for you to do to be able to prepare for the TPE on-site interview. Um, yes, we will be able to provide mock interviews while we're there on site, but we also encourage you to be able to do mock interviews in some of your schools or some of your networks that you have with people that you can trust to give you some really pointed feedback about some things that you should think about. Some of the things that when I did went through some mock interviewing is that people were able, some of my mentors were able to point out small nuances that I had about myself that could be distracting to an employer. So if you're a person, for example, who talks with their hands, then sometimes if you're talking too much with your hands, it might be distracting. And so being able to do mock interviews can help with those things, but then it can also really help you a lot with getting prepared to answer different types of questions, getting prepared to think through some of the questions that you might be asked, um, and also how you can sell your skill set in the best way. Um, Always prepare questions for the interview team ahead of time. And so just like I was talking about doing your research beforehand, it's really important for you to be able to um, find some pointed questions that you can ask the team to show that you know a little bit about who they are and what they stand for. Um, also, if you can find compelling stories, uh, to be able to tell, make sure that you can have some stories and some examples that can go along with that to be able to show what sets you apart as a candidate. And so um, whether it's through compelling stories or also defining what sets you apart from all the other candidates, I think that's really important to be able to uh, talk about as well. So the, the next thing, um, and this is just one of those things where it's, you know, what do I pack? What do I need to bring with me when I'm coming to the placement exchange? And so um, we've created a very small list of things here for you to pack um, and think about while you're, while you're in TPE. And so like we talked about before, professional business attire is definitely something that's going to be really important um, for you to be able to be successful in your interviews. There are four days of interviews that are going to be happening. And so um, I tell people all the time, don't overpack. You don't need to bring all four different suits with you. Um, if you want to bring one, you know, one or two of those so that you can swap them in and out every other day and making sure that you can change into different shirts and different things like that, that might help to save in some of your packing. But make sure that you bring that professional business attire. Um, make sure that you bring some comfortable shoes with you as well. Um, there's nothing worse than going to TPE in the brand new pair of shoes that you just bought and they're not broken in just yet and it can make you uncomfortable for the rest of the day which can really affect your performance and so I always encourage people if you're going to buy new shoes for TPE that's great. Wear them around a couple times so that you can get really comfortable in them and they can be broken in so that when you get there you're not unable to be able to you're not unable to function because your shoes are something that you are distracted by. Um, and so I always encourage people to bring comfortable shoes, bring something that you can really walk around in because TPE 
um, has a lot of movement that's going on throughout the day. And so whatever you think is most appropriate for that, um, think about that. Clothing that's appropriate for San Antonio in March. Um, if you're like me, going to San Antonio is something very new to you. Um, and I'm up in the in the northeastern part of the United States, and so March for us here is a little cooler. But I know when I'm going to San Antonio, I probably need to pack for a warm spring day. Uh, and so making sure that the evening attire that you need to wear or want to wear, um, you don't necessarily need to be in business professional attire after your interviews are over, but just make sure that you're appropriate for San Antonio, which also might impact the professional business attire that you choose to wear as well. Um, make sure you pack enough toiletries and you might even want to pack a couple for a bag that, that's with you when you're on, on site, um, on the interview site, because there might you just never know what may happen. So just having a few small things with you could be really important. Whatever medication that you might need, um, if you have allergies or anything else like that, having that medication ready to go is going to be something that can really save you. And then also having a pad folio to be able to take notes. Um, and having your questions written and typed out because you're going to be talking to a lot of different people while you're on TPE, at TPE. And so it's really important for you to be able to type out your questions, write out your questions, and then being able to take notes during interviews as well. Um, a lot of times when people are taking notes during an interview, it's not too distracting. A lot of employers don't mind it. We are fully aware that you're in a competitive environment trying to find a job that's going to be the best fit for you. And we want the position to be the best fit for our institutions as well. And so being able to take notes so that you can remember what's going on, I think, is really important. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher Barnes. I am also a, a member of the Candidate Development uh, Committee for TPE. I am originally from the Chicago area. I uh, currently work in advising at the University of Wisconsin-Medicine and I will be picking up uh, where Donald left off uh, in regards to the spaces, but also the support and services that we offer on site. Um, and so as you all can see on the screen, uh, we have actual corridor for candidates in which we have the candidate workroom, uh, mid-level workroom, quiet space for candidates, and then also the, the uh, computer room. So the candidate workroom is where most uh, candidates actually get their work done. Uh, you will have computer access and able to print. Um, so if you have any resumes you need to print off before going into an interview, you have that access. Uh, but also you will, will find a, uh, a table at the front of the room in which we have a lot of supplies. So we'll have basically all of the office supplies you'll need, so staples, uh, paper clips, pens, pencils. Uh, we also will have the message to employer slips that you can pick up, fill out, and then place in a black, uh, black container at the front desk or the front table uh, in which we will have volunteers coming by and picking up those messages to deliver to the employer's mailbox. So that's the Canada workroom in a nutshell. In regards to the middle uh, mid-level workroom, that's for our, our mid-level candidates, so people who are currently working full-time, uh, who are professionals uh, and they're getting back on the market in regards to looking for employment. That space is dedicated for them. And then also we have a quiet space. So this space, whereas the candidate workroom will be utilized to, to maybe talk with colleagues and, and, and take notes and just kind of like relax and talk with others, the, the quiet space is, is utilized just to reflect. Uh, so we actually provide you all space in which it's a no phone zone as well as no group discussion zone. Um, and so people can literally sit in the space and just reflect on what's going on or maybe take notes or prepare for upcoming interviews or uh, what we'll talk about in a second, um, write down some of the questions that you were asked during your, your previous interview in regards to preparing for the, the upcoming uh, interviews. Uh, on top of the, the spaces that we provide, we provide different support um, and services. As you all can see, we actually have round tables that we will have on site. Um, and so round tables are discussions on various topics. Uh, some of the topics that we are working to present to you all this year or in 2017 will be, uh, one of them is distinguishing yourself as a candidate. So making yourself stand out uh, from other candidates um, and really being able to, to draw upon some of the things that you're really strong at uh, and being able to, to market yourself 
and, and help employers remember who you are so that way when they go back and they're deliberating and they're trying to figure out who they want to bring on campus, you stand out in mind to them in a positive way. Uh, other topics include the guide to the table interview. So we realize that not every institution here in the U.S. prepares their, 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 their students to, to interview uh, various ways. And so um, interviewing face-to-face -face over a table and oftentimes there being two employers and, and just you, uh, but also in a space where there are other tables right next to you. So there's going to be other candidates in, uh, being interviewed at the same time you're being interviewed. It can be a little intimidating, and so we, we figured it would be a, a really good topic to talk about, so how to, how to navigate that um, and to, to avoid stressing out and being able to focus on your interview and no one else's. But also another roundtable topic we're focusing on will be uh, asking employers the right questions. So in regards to figuring out the, the perfect fit for you in regards to the department and institution, so that's really important, uh, just as important as it is for the university to feel like you're a good fit for them, we need to make sure, you all need to make sure that the university is a good fit for you. So that's very, very important in your job search. And so there are certain questions that you, you can ask to tease out the information that you need to make an uh, informed decision as to whether you, you feel that institution is a really good fit for you uh, or not. Some other services that we offer, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. And so these sessions will be with a seasoned uh, student affairs professional in which you can discuss interview tips and suggestions, but also you can ask that professional questions uh, and even have your resume reviewed one last time before interviews. And uh, yeah, then you also have us as a support team, uh, candidate development staff. Uh, so there's three of us. We will have little identifiers, so we'll, we'll be wearing lanyards in which you will be able to identify us. We'll also a lot of times be sitting at the table at the front of the, the candidate workroom where if you have any questions at all or you, or if you need some supplies, um, you can come to the front table and we will take care of it for you or figure out a way uh, to, to get the, the, the things you need. Um, so yeah, we also will have a map so we can point out uh, the tables on the map of where you will be going for your interviews and, and things of that nature. So those are some of the uh, the, the support systems, but also services that we provide uh, on site. All right, so TPE on site in regards to after the interview. Um, so this is just as important as the, dur during, excuse me, or before uh, the interview. Um, and so as you all can, can see, here are some suggestions that we have for you. Uh, some of the things that I'm going to talk about in particular, uh, one of them is taking notes. Um, so when we say taking notes, and this is something I talked about uh, before on the previous slide, uh, but when we say taking notes, it's really important for you to uh, take notes during the interview uh, in regards to things that you, you talk about because most likely if you go in for like a second or third round interview, you might come across that same employer again. And so having you know, something that you can, can pull back up from the previous conversation you had with them is very important. But another reason why you want to take notes, especially during the, the interview, is because it can really help you better understand the types of questions that will be asked of you by different universities. And so oftentimes in student affairs, we have a system of questions that we will ask. And so there are certain buzzwords, keywords that you will oftentimes hear within certain questions. And so if you can remember those questions and, and jot them down, keep in mind that these are some of the questions that you will continue to hear over and over um, at TPE. Now, keep, also keep in mind that there will be some, some pretty unique questions, you know, to, to, to mix up the, the pot a little bit for a lot of uh, universities. But a lot of the questions you will hear over and over again, um, maybe not in the same format, but just tweaked a little bit. Um, so taking notes uh, in that regard can really help you. But also we encourage you all to, to write thank you notes. Um, and actually we, we actually encourage you all to email thank you notes as opposed to, to writing thank you notes. So there's different services online, free services where you can make thank you cards, um, e-cards, and you can send those to the employer or the, the university uh, to thank them for, for meeting with you. Um, and so something that we 
uh, encourage you to do also is to write those thank you those thank you cards or notes or email them immediately after you finish your interview if you have the the option to do so and that's really important I think another thing that can really help you in this regard is when you do write the note or you email the note try to include something with, from the interview so that, that that way they can remember who you were so if you say it's something that was very interesting about yourself or maybe you you remember something that the employer said that was very interesting uh, that struck a you know a chord with you then go ahead and mention that within your thank you note uh, so that way they can you know they, they realize that, okay this this student or this candidate um, obviously you know was listening and paying attention and so they they might be a really good candidate for us on top of that some of the other notes that we have uh, in regards to the atmosphere of TPE and NASPA in general is going to be pretty loud uh, very busy um, and so for my my fellow introverts uh, one thing that because I'm definitely an introvert myself uh, one thing I definitely encourage is that you carve out time for yourself which is going to be really important if you feel like you need to step away from the sensor to maybe just go take a you know grab a bite to eat or just reflect and, and relax for a little bit by all means do so if you want to walk the river walk um, it's, it's a really nice river walk uh, so you can go do that uh, take some time to yourself and then you know once you collect your thoughts come back to the center and go back to your interviews but uh, it can be a little overwhelming because there's so many people there and you'll have TPE you also have NASPA I'm not sure if we'll have other conferences in the area but that's a possibility as well um, so just keeping in mind what the atmosphere will be like I definitely most certainly encourage you to make sure you are taking time for yourself and if you need to take you know a step back and, and remove yourself from the center um, to just collect your thoughts and write some notes and just have time to yourself by all means do so all right so some some additional things to remember um, as you get closer and closer to uh, on-site um, so when you're actually on-site in San Antonio it's going to be very important for you to utilize and expand your network and so that's something that we most certainly encourage you all to take advantage of uh, so keep in mind that you will have colleagues there um, and those colleagues can introduce you to other colleagues when you're sitting there and waiting to to go into your interview that might be a good time if you're up for it to maybe you know just uh, say hi to the next person or the, the person next to you and you might strike up a conversation you never know who people know and so in that regard they might be able to connect you with because you never know what university they're from you know so in that case they might be there representing their university but that university may also have a, a couple of departments there searching and so just by striking up a, a conversation with that person they might you know be able to to put you in contact with uh, someone who is looking for you know a candidate um, that fits your description you know so that's that's that can be really awesome uh, so we do want you to utilize your your networks but also expand it uh, one way you can definitely expand your network at TPE is just simply saying hi to people when you're in very close uh, proximity to others in elevators or walking up the steps just simply say hi um, you can you know ask simple questions you know like hey like you know what, what university are you from and then strike up a conversation in that regard also uh, one really big way you big way that you can um, utilize or expand your network is by volunteering and so we'll actually talk about that a little later on uh, in the presentation uh, but also we we want you all to to remember to to keep it classy everywhere you go um, even when you think that you are off let me put that in quotes on, on or air quotes on, on purpose um, because keep in mind that you never know who's nearby or who's around you and so with that being said you you don't know if they're an employer or a candidate you know so you don't know who they know they may know someone who you know interview uh, interviewed you or an employer who you know was thinking about picking you up and so if you do have bad experiences with employers uh, during interviews we ask we we encourage you all to you know if you're going to talk about those experiences I would consider talking about them in private as opposed to talking about them out in public um, because in that case you just never know who knows who and so that might get back to the institution and with student affairs being a very small field uh, that's the last thing you want especially as you are looking for 
a, a full-time position, then that could really uh, do some damage. So we ask you to keep it classy in that way. Um, enjoy the socials and, and use them as a way to learn more about the job, the institution, the culture, the, the staff, which is really important. A lot of times, uh, I'm not sure if we talked about this earlier, but the, the socials are events that uh, universities use or departments will use to just kind of fill out the candidate a little bit more and give them a chance to interact with some of the other staff within that department in a more relaxed setting. Uh, keep in mind that you are not air quotes off that you are still on. Um, so one thing that I, I strongly encourage moving when you do, when you are offered socials, uh, social invitations and you take up those social invitations, you go to them, I encourage you all to be very careful with drinking. Uh, some socials, they will actually have alcohol. And, hey, you know, you can have a drink, things like that. Just always be aware um, and keep in mind that you are still on. And so they are, you know, definitely keeping you in mind and they, you know, they, they might have staff who are just, you know, observing the room and observing the space and how you interact with others. And so that's very important for you all to be aware of. Another thing that I feel Donald touched on um, pretty well is managing your time wisely. So one suggestion I always have, some, some of you all will go to TPE and you might have like six to seven interviews a day. And that's no lie. Um, so I know, you know, coming out of grad school, because I remember my TP experience coming out of grad school, when you get those interviews, you get super excited. You're like, oh, man, like I just want to plan my whole day to have interviews because, you know, that gives me more chances to get a job. And at the time, when you're back at your home institution, that makes sense. But then when you arrive actually on site and you see how, how busy the day can be and how taxing some of those interviews can be, um, you you start to realize, okay, maybe I should have some breaks. And so we definitely encourage you all to actually schedule out some breaks. So before you actually even start, you know, setting your schedule uh, with interviews, we encourage you to mark off some times in your, on your schedule where you just take breaks. So you want to make sure you, you get a break in there for maybe a snack in the morning, a snack in the afternoon, and also lunch, you know, before your, your schedule gets filled up because the last thing you want is to have seven, eight, maybe even nine interviews back to back to back to back to back, and you have no breaks at all. So you're literally walking, you know, from place to place, going from interview to interview, not really having a chance to grab some water, and that could be very taxing. Um, and it could, it could have a, a direct impact on, um, on your interviewing. Last but not least, this isn't about cutthroat or being cutthroat. It's about finding the perfect fit for you. And so that's why we, in the, in the previous slide, we encourage you all to, to take notes and also ask questions that can really help you determine if that university is a good fit for you. Because keep in mind, I, I know colleagues who, you know, thought that a certain university was a really good fit for them, and then they got there and they ended up, you know, on the job search of the, the market again halfway throughout the year or um, maybe at the end of the year just leaving that university because it wasn't a good fit for them. Now, I know far more people where, you know, that first university uh, that they went to after TPE was a really good fit for them, but there are those, those occasions where, you know, you might end up at a university where it's just not a good fit for you. And so if you can, you know, uh, come to on-site in San Antonio with some really good questions or meet with one of our, our uh, professional coaches who can then help you craft some of your questions. So you might know what you're looking for, but maybe not know how to phrase the question so they can help you with that. So that way you can get the information you need to make a uh, informed decision. So some of the upcoming events that we actually have uh, are the resume content, um, which is a, a webinar that will be taking place on November 16th at 2 p.m. We also have the TPE candidate Q&A session December 8th and then navigating TPE on site 2017 on a fixed budget. We do realize that a lot of you all are current grad students, and so we, we understand the struggle is real. Uh, we've been in that position ourselves where, you know, you're trying to make a dollar to 15 cents, and it, it's real uh, financially. And so we want to talk with you all about having a budget on site um, and being able to manage your funds to make them last. So something that I just uh, discussed maybe about two slides before, one way that you can expand your network is actually volunteering with TPE. Um, 
And so we have various opportunities that you can, you know, um, take advantage of in regards to volunteering year-round, um, as well as on-site. Um, and so we actually have a link down here, so www.theplacementexchange.org uh, forward slash volunteer. Um, and from there, it will list out uh, and also describe some of the different experiences you can be a part of. And then you can actually sign up to be a volunteer. So that's one of the really cool ways to actually get really involved on site, but also before on site. Um, but in regards to on site in particular, you can help with uh, mail management. Um, you know, if uh, you can help with various other things and interact with candidates, and employers, but also the TPE committee. And so that can be an awesome experience for you. And so last but not least, I know we had some, some questions uh, that we um, that people were wanting to ask or have answered. And so now is the time to answer those questions. So I'm I, not sure. Yeah, I pulled one. Whoops, uh, I've been trying to keep track of what's going on down here. Um, and so the first question that we had up was, if you apply to a school ahead of TPE, and they want to interview you, do you sign up for the interview at the interview scheduling table on site? Um, and so just to quickly answer that question, a lot of times um, you'll be able to schedule interviews with schools prior to TPE even starting. Um, some schools will do phone interviews or Skype interviews or something with you prior to TPE. Some schools do all their interviews at TPE. Um, but if it's something that is scheduled ahead of time, um, a lot of times, uh, the employer will be able to go in um, and look at your schedule availability and then be able to schedule that interview ahead of time. Um, for example, um, as an employer prior, um, and I schedule a lot of interviews for my school, I normally do a lot of that stuff ahead of time. But sometimes you might not be able to schedule something ahead of time or you might start traveling already and then um, if you still have a note from them and you need to schedule an interview, you can still feel free to do that on site. Um, the next question was, is your candidate number the same thing as your on-site event ID? Chris or Berenice, did you? I can't remember. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So that is a good question. I want to say yes. I'm trying to remember what the the system was. Um I'm pretty sure that it was the same yeah. thing. And so um, a lot of times your candidate number and your on-site ID, it'll start with the letter C um, and then have a number behind it. And it's normally a three or four digit number. Um, and so um, when you log in, it should say um, right at the top of the screen what your candidate number is. Um, and if you can't find it, just make sure that you send us an email at candidates at theplacementexchange.org and we'll be sure to re-clarify what that is. Um, the next question was, what details or information should we add to our TPE candidate profile? So some of the details that um, remembering back when I was a, a grad student, some of the details that I added uh, were my my, my name, um, also institution. I do believe you have the option to choose the, the areas that you're looking to, to go into uh, in regards to professional areas, uh, but also I do believe you have a, an option to choose some of the, the regions that you're, you're looking to, to, to go into or maybe there's like a certain particular region that you want to stay in. Um, you're able to discuss that as well. Um, but is Bernice on the on the line? Will she have any additional feedback? Okay, maybe not. Yeah, I'm not sure if her, I know that she was having some phone trouble. Um, the other thing that I was going to say that you can add to your candidate profile 
um, is a good summary of what you're looking for in a position and a summary of your skills. Um, a lot of times we can get access to your resume pretty quickly, but if on your candidate profile you have some very brief information, um, and there are some prescribed fields that you can fill out on there ahead of time too. Um, but a good summary of information about who you are and what your skills are and what you're looking for um, is something that can attract um, employers to your profile. Um, the next question that was on here was, can employees see, our employers, can they see which yeah. jobs you have favorited on your profile? Um, and the quick answer to that is no, they cannot see that. And so your candidate profile um, and what you're favoriting and applying for and everything else is your own personal business and the only person that can see that is you. Um, as an employer, that we can only see the candidates that we've scheduled with, et cetera. Um, and even when your schedule starts to get full, it just shows us as an employer that your that time is unavailable. It doesn't say what school you've applied for. It doesn't say what schools you are favoriting or anything else like that. That's all per your own personal information. I think I got to the end of the question list that was on here. And so did anybody else have any other questions that they wanted to ask? If so, uh, you can put that in the question box and we're happy to answer it for you. All right. So then I guess with that, um, it doesn't seem like there's any other questions. Um, if you do have any questions, you can always feel free to email us at candidates at theplacementexchange.org, um, and we're happy to um, answer anything else that you have going on. Um, and like Chris pointed out earlier, be sure to tune into the other webinars and question and answer sessions that we have coming up. Um, and so best of luck with everything and we'll see you in uh, San Antonio. And just before we end here, folks, um, this webinar will be recorded um, and it will be available on the Placement Exchange website. And so if you go under um, career resources, uh, we'll have a list, there's a list of a bunch of uh, previous webinars and sessions that we've recorded as well. Uh, so you can have access to all those and we're going to record the vast majority of what we produce. So if you and or a colleague, um, you know, can't make it to something, uh, we do our best to make sure that that's available to you in the end. Uh, so do feel free to go back and check some of those um, some of those resources too there are also blog posts um, that the candidate uh, group and um, a lot of our folks who work in the placement exchange have been posting uh, to help you out and so um, and as well if you have any resources you'd like us to look out for for you um, any information that would be helpful again using that email address candidates at the placement exchange.org uh, we're happy to work on that for you and answer as best as you can um, we're available to you um, as as much as we possibly can over the next several months before the on-site event and beyond. Uh, so don't hesitate to ask us any questions. Um, otherwise, that's the end of our webinar. Thank you so much again for taking time out. We know it's a late evening and uh, it's a busy time of year for everybody. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thanks to our presenters uh, from this evening as well, Donald Bernice and Chris. And uh, we will see you next time. And again, if you need anything, let us know. Have a wonderful evening, everybody.